Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Dylan Mulvaney was born on December 29, 1996, in San Diego, California. Dylan identifies as a woman, therefore I will refer to Dylan with the corresponding pronouns. In 2019, Dylan graduated from college with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Musical Theater. A few years before this, she started acting. Her first noteworthy role was in the musical The Book of Mormon. She was also featured in several other theater productions like how the Grinch Stole Christmas, and High School Musical. In 2021, Dylan came out as a transgender woman. She documented her gender transition on the social media platform TikTok. She published a series of videos titled Days of Girlhood. Dylan skyrocketed to fame on the platform and became a popular social media influencer. In October of 2022, Dylan met with Joe Biden for the online news outlet, Now This News. During this meeting, Joe Biden described Republican efforts to restrict gender-affirming care as outrageous and immoral. In December 2022, Dylan posted on Instagram indicating that she had a surgery to make her face appear more feminine. In March of 2023, Dylan appeared on the Drew Barrymore show, during which Drew Barrymore kneeled before her. This is actually something that Drew Barrymore has done in front of many guests, including Hillary Clinton. I think it's a gimmick that she uses on the show to artificially force a traumatic moment. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. In early April 2023, the beer manufacturer, Bud Light, which is owned by Anheuser-Busch, sent a few cans of beer to Dylan as part of a sponsorship arrangement. Bud Light was promoting what they referred to as the Easy Carry Contest. This is where people post videos of themselves holding as many cans of Bud Light as possible for a chance to win $15,000. Easy Carry Contest may not be the most appropriate name. I was thinking they should call it the Back Injury Challenge or see how easy it is to get carried into the ER contest. Either way, Dylan posted a video where she used the beers to celebrate March Madness and her first year of womanhood. She also showed a Bud Light can featuring her image, which apparently the beer company had sent to her. This sponsorship resulted in a lot of people becoming upset. One of them was the musical artist Kid Rock. He posted a video where he used a rifle to shoot cans of Bud Light. He said blank Bud Light and blank Anheuser-Busch. The country singer Travis Tritt also expressed his displeasure at Bud Light's marketing tactic banning the beer from his concerts. Many called for a boycott of Bud Light. There was the sense that the company forgot who their core customers were, like there was a disconnect between their marketing effort and their customer base. Their primary customers are not transgender individuals, rather people who like awful beer. The company responded to the controversy by saying, quote, Anheuser-Busch works with hundreds of influencers across our brands, as one of many ways to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics. From time to time, we produce unique commemorative cans for fans and for brand influencers like Dylan Mulvaney. This commemorative can was a gift to celebrate a personal milestone and is not for sale to the general public." Unquote. Before the controversy started, the vice president of marketing for Bud Light was featured on a podcast. She talked about how the brand had been in decline for a long time. She noted that the company needed to attract young drinkers, a phrase that in itself is worrisome. She wanted to evolve and elevate the brand's out-of-touch image to make the image more inclusive and make it feel lighter and brighter. Anheuser-Busch is a massive company that probably will not sustain any real consequences due to the backlash, but this incident does highlight strong differences in opinion that people have about transgenderism or transgender ideology. 
Not surprisingly, the response to this incident from the left was completely different than what we saw from the right. The liberal media responded by saying that conservatives were overreacting to Bud Light's business strategy. It suggested that conservatives were out of touch with the younger generation who have embraced the transgender ideology. The media also labeled the response as anti-trans and transphobic because, evidently, they are required to say those words in every article on the topic of transgenderism. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts in a few areas that stood out to me regarding this incident with Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light. Item number one. As far as the transgender topic, the message of the liberal media is that conservatives are not tolerant and they are full of hate. The message of conservatives is that liberals have become lost in a fantasy world where science doesn't matter and they are full of hate. So both sides accuse the other of being hateful and wrong on the topic of transgender ideology. With that in mind, it would be helpful to know where Americans stand on the transgender issue. Which brings me to item number two. A study in 2022 collected information about American attitudes on the issue of transgender rights. Some of the findings were expected, but others were quite surprising. I will include some information from other studies as well. It's also important to note that when I use the terms Republican and Democrat in these results, this includes individuals leaning in that direction in accordance with the methodology of the study. Let's take a look at the results. About 1.6% of the population identifies as transgender or non-binary, which represents an increase over the last few years. Not long ago, that number was 0.5%. Young people are significantly overrepresented in this population. They are much more likely to be transgender. North Carolina has the highest percentage of adults who are transgender, and West Virginia has the lowest. About 80% of Americans feel as though transgender people are discriminated against, and 64% are in favor of laws to protect the community from discrimination. Participants were asked about how far society has gone to accept transgender people. 38% of respondents said that society has gone too far. 36% indicated society has not gone far enough. 60% of Americans said that a person's gender is determined by their sex, meaning gender and biological sex are the same thing. In 2017, that number was 54%, so it increased 6% in five years. Many participants believe that their position on this topic was mostly informed by science, so both sides are claiming that science helped them to come to whatever conclusion they reached. Political affiliation is a good predictor of one's beliefs on the relationship between sex and gender, 86% of Republicans said that gender is determined by biological sex. Only 38% of Democrats felt the same way. 58% of respondents believed that transgender athletes should compete on teams that match their biological sex. 46% were in favor of making it illegal for healthcare professionals to support a gender transition for someone under the age of 18. These results are fairly interesting. They paint a picture of a country that is sympathetic to what transgender people have to deal with as far as discrimination, but also a country that's not completely convinced that science supports transgender ideology. This brings me to item number three. Based on surveys, it would appear as though the impact of transgender policies on the rights of other people is a point of contention. I think a lot of people can accept that transgender people are real, and that their rights should be protected, but they view the expression of the rights as something that should only affect the transgender individual, like it should not necessarily affect other people. For example, if a biological male wants to maintain a female gender expression by wearing clothing styles typically associated with women, many people do not have a problem with that. This is an individual right. It's a personal choice. A person can dress according to their preference. The problem for many people is the expansion of transgender rights that appear to intrude on people who are not invested in the ideology. One could argue that a person's rights extend until they make contact with another person's rights. That is the boundary. A person can do whatever they want as long as they don't interfere with the rights of another. 
Many Americans are worried that the sports issue is an example of transgender rights infringing on the rights of others. For example, imagine a woman who wants to join a swim team. She expects to be competing against women who are biological females. Her expectations are going to be shattered if she has to compete against a biological male with a female gender expression. There is something inherently unfair about joining a competition under one set of rules only to have those rules change. Furthermore, now there is no way for women to compete against only women. That is the whole point of women's sports. The very essence of the endeavor has now been altered. If this woman were to create a new gender expression, which included only biological females, and she wanted to compete against only this group, she would be accused of being anti-trans and transphobic. Apparently, at least according to the far left, in order to create a new gender category, somebody needs to be transgender. Here's another way of putting this argument regarding the way people view rights. I think many people are fine with any gender expression a person wants, as long as that expression is not treated as real. Like, as long as the members of the transgender community do not try to apply the preferred gender as if they were biologically that gender. Under this theory, gender is contained to the realm of a social construct while acknowledging the reality of biological sex. Gender is separate from sex. A person can be any gender they want, but that doesn't change their sex. The problem with this theory is that a critical value of the transgender ideology is to cross over that bridge, is to move from the preferred gender expression to being treated as if one is actually the other biological sex. There is no easy solution to this dilemma because biological sex is in the realm of science, and science is clear on this topic. Item number four. Another challenge with the transgender debate has to do with the use of gender-affirming medical care. This is not viewed so much as an intrusion on the rights of people who do not want to get involved, but rather something that is harmful to transgender people. Some people who have been treated with gender-affirming surgeries have come to regret it. Not all of them, but a non-negligible number. There is a concern that the social construct of gender is being transported into the world of the irreversible. A person can dress as the other gender and later decide not to dress that way. However, surgery is often permanent, or at the least, difficult to reverse. If someone realized at one point in their life that they were transgender, then it stands to reason that at another point in their life, they may realize they are not. How can anyone know if this will or will not happen for any particular transgender person? Item number five, what does all this information reveal about the incident with Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light? Dylan has been a favorite target of conservatives for a few reasons, including this idea that she, perhaps unintentionally, promoted gender-affirming surgery. She has millions of followers who listen to what she says. They might start to think that surgery is a good idea when the research has not caught up to all the changes that have been happening with the social construct of gender. I also think conservatives are upset because they think that Bud Light has abandoned their core customers. Here's how I view this. Those on the far left have been using the cancel culture for years in order to put pressure on businesses. People on the right can do the same thing. People certainly have the right to vote through their purchasing behavior, although in the case of Bud Light, I think this debate is academic. Some have suggested that a better argument for not purchasing Bud Light is because it tastes terrible. Item number six, one finding that has occurred several times in the research is that knowing a transgender person is associated with being more sympathetic to their cause. There's something about talking to a person that brings their concerns into clear view. I have worked with many transgender people throughout the years, and the vast majority of the time, they are quite genuine and relatable. It's easy to see how they have struggled dealing with each other, their supporters, and their detractors. One thing I've noticed is that the liberal media does not really seem to understand transgender people. They pretend that they do, but I wonder if they've ever really spent time with any members of the community. The liberal media tends to write articles that attack conservatives as causing any problems that transgender people have, but that is a massive 
oversimplification. The media ignores the fact that the debate about transgenderism is far from settled. Society is not sure what to do yet. Transgender ideology is a divisive topic. A robust debate is necessary, not intellectually lazy accusations like being anti-trans or transphobic. The arrogance of the liberal media is on display here. They choose to support one side of a topic they don't really understand, and then declare their belief as the truth. All those who disagree with them are simply haters and people who overvalue science at the expense of the human component. Transgender people would be better served if Americans could have an open dialogue about the transgender topic. The liberal media doesn't care about transgender people. They care about attacking opponents. They continue to bully people in the name of supporting the transgender cause, but ultimately, they are hurting it. Moving to my final item, number seven. Here's an analogy I came up with for the division in the United States about transgender ideology. Imagine a husband and wife who have different levels of conscientiousness. The wife is highly conscientious. She is financially responsible, very careful with her money. The husband is low in conscientiousness. He doesn't pay his credit cards on time, his credit score is awful, and he burns through his paycheck the second he gets it. They are each free to make their own decisions, but at the same time, they are married. Their behavior affects each other. If they went to a mental health counselor to work on their marriage, the counselor would not tell them that what they need is more hate and accusations. Rather, the therapist would tell them that they need to find common ground and figure out the problem. They need more understanding of each other, and there is no rush to make any decisions. In the end, an unhappy compromise is probably better than an eternal war. Those are my thoughts in the case of Dylan Mulvaney and Bud Light. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.